Hi, and welcome to the latest in our series of practical simulator sessions. Now in this session, I want to look at another exercise. This time, it's the Mexican wave. What we're going to do is basically create the notation for a Mexican wave, and we'll then uh, put it into the right format for Virtual Belfry. We'll then bring it uh, back to the dumbbell, uh, install it, and finally see if I can actually ring it. So uh, that's the plan. We need to go over to the computer now and sort out the notation. So let's get started. Right, so here we are at the computer and we're going to put together the notation for the basic Mexican wave. Now, as we know, if you look at a normal Mexican wave you'll find that the first thing that happens is that the seconds place bell leads and then it will go back to seconds place. It will then go to thirds place and then it will return back to seconds place where it will stay. The treble will stay leading after uh, the first couple of blows. Third place, fourth place, uh, fifth place and sixth place bells. They're going to stay where they are. until the next part of the wave. filling these in as we go so because the two has moved to there the three must go to here and then back again for two blows it will then be taken off by the fourth place bell and then it will continue merrily on its way so the fourth place bell is going to stay where it is then it's going to go up into thirds place and thirds place bell is going to do two blows there Fourth place bell will end up coming back in and will then be take come out to fifth place. As you can see, getting your head around this can be quite fun. Uh, Second place bell will stay together. Fifth place bell is not going to go anywhere until Here where it's going up so the fifth place bell literally is going all the way down there and then it's going to come into here the sixth place bell has been quite happily sitting tenoring behind all the way to here but now the sixth place bell is going to we're going to put the fifth place bell back into there and then the sixth place bell is going to do its little bit of work at the end so we can fill out now the rest of these blanks so the fourth place bell is back in 
here. The fifth place bell must have moved into sixth place, then it comes back. Third place, in fact, we can copy all of those straight down. And there we go, there we have our Mexican wave. You can see it by looking at the white uh, portion, so the bells that are changing, it sort of moves its way uh, down to the back. So to create the notation for that, again, it's fairly straightforward. What we're doing is looking at the bells, the place bells, uh, the ones that don't move. So anything in yellow, we want the place numbers into the notation. So here we just have the bells in fourth and fifth place have stayed the same. Here we have the bells in second and fifth place. So that becomes two five. Oops. You can't afford to make uh, any mistakes in this because you'll end up with all sorts of problems when you paste it into Virtual Belfry. Finally, remember we are finishing on a backstroke. That just means that the exercise will actually come to an end within the uh, uh, within the virtual belfry program. So it'll actually call the the bells to stand at the end if that's how it's set. You can see the blue marks here. These are the points at which we end up with rounds again, and we actually end up in rounds between each of the, uh, the parts of the wave. So we are going to have to use the keep going button to get over these um, if we find that it stops. So that's our notation. What we're going to do now is we're going to copy that. I find it easiest to use Notepad to paste this in and literally just put a full stop at the end of each line. Now we are always using long form notation for these exercises. So we're actually putting everything in apart from the treble and the tenor. You'll find as you get more used to notation, there's all sorts of clever ways that you can reduce the amount of input that you need as you go along. So you start looking for patterns where uh, things will are repeated, for example, and then you can put in a, um, a character which will tell it to repeat until a lead end, that sort of thing. We're not worried about it at the moment because what we're trying to do is set up some exercises and it's good if you're learning notation to actually do it longhand anyway. So we're now gonna copy that. We can switch over to Virtual Belfry. Now this is a minor method. Uh, so we're going to use exercises in minor and we're going to create a new one. We're gonna call this uh, my Mexican wave. We're going to paste in the notation that we did. Click OK. We've got my Mexican wave highlighted. And we'll click Choose. You can see it here. And if we, we've got Keep Going set to zero at the moment. So if we click Generate, and you can, you can see here, because we only have 
uh, we have the repeated rounds appearing. What happens is that uh, Virtual Belfry picks that up and says, OK, you're back to round, so that will be the normal finish point. So if we add a keep going, we get another bit uh, because we had another one immediately afterwards. We now have another. You can see here that the waves are slowly going. Another two. And we should be at one more. There we go. And that should be our backstroke. So you can continue with the keep goings and go back in again and do it again. So you can see here that one has started again. We don't need to do that. We just, so we'll just go back. Oops. One more. There we go. And that takes us to our finish point. Again, we can check this by going to the ropes and literally just clicking go. Go next time. That's all. Stand. Okay, so there we go. It all seems to be working fine. Uh, what we now need to do, to do, of course, is to go and try it on a dumbbell. Right, we're back at the dumbbell. I've got Virtual Belfry loaded with our notation so we've got my mexican wave minor selected uh, i have decided to ring bell number two first and if you look we have keep going set to nine this is because as part of the wave we keep going back into rounds and we have to keep stepping over that to get all the way through the exercise um, if we click generate we can get the blue line and you can see here that uh, the two is going to lead and then it will go back to second place, third place and then back and it's work's done. So it then just has to keep in second place all the way down. Now what you could do is create notation that starts another wave uh, halfway down. So you actually have two waves running simultaneously. If any of you would like to do that, uh, feel free to uh, post a comment with the notation so uh, everybody can have the benefit of that. If we look at bell number five, which is the other one that I would like to ring this time, we've got a long period of time here when there's no work. So this is a bit of an element uh, of practicing concentration, um, which you have to do obviously uh, later when you're, you're ringing methods. So we've got uh, about 14 blows there before we actually um, go into fourth place, back to fifth, sixth, and then we'll be, we'll be finished. So, that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'll select bell number two, go back to the ropes, and uh, yeah, let's see if we can ring it.
Okay, so that's wrong, it is bell number two. If we quickly now just go back to the blue line display, we can actually get some feedback as to how we got on. So we started here, you can see the gold and the blue lines are quite close together. Uh, I was a bit late there, um, moving back into seconds place, and then there was a little bit of a, uh, um, a bit of lateness um, later on. That was probably when I was thinking we must be getting to the end. Okay, so you can always go and get feedback. And if we now go back to the ropes, select bell number five, then uh, see how good my concentration is on this one. Okay, the, uh, the concentration wasn't bad um, while we did the exercise, but when they said stand, I did it a little bit too early. So uh, there you go, let's have a quick look at the, uh, the blue line for that one. Um, it was pretty good all the way through. Um, not too bad on the, uh, when I made play, went into fourth place and back again, but obviously big mistake, but there, by then the method was nearly, the exercise was nearly finished. So. Uh, Okay, so that is uh, how to set up a Mexican wave, um, the notation and ringing. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please leave some comments below. Uh, like, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we would like to let you know when more of these videos are uploaded. And of course, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all very soon.